Welcome to the D-Hop Channel. Challenge. This show is a fierce competition between teams of software developers vying for an award of $350,000 and a chance to bring their tech solutions to life. The Ministry of Digital Transformation has paired developers with government agencies to create software solutions to benefit their clients. Each week, three teams of coders will pitch their solutions to experts all competitors are members of the Ministry's Developers Hub, or the D-Hub community. You must be 18 and over, a citizen and a resident in Trinidad and Tobago to join the community. On the D-Hub, members get access to training, incubators, accelerators, learning opportunities, and digital tools. And they get to take part in the D-Hub Challenge. Our Developers Hub project builds on the, the creativity of our people. What we are doing is pulling together people, like-minded people, people who are developers, and we're starting with software developers at the start, to create software that will su support the needs of government, support the needs of the private sector, and eventually create products that are exportable. So the concept here is, can we create an environment where developers can create the capability to go from idea to producing viable products that could augment the system the government put in. To do that, we also have a technology site. Data. And the technology site is an actual website. It's, a, it's an actual hub. So we call it the Developers Hub. So that platform is the primary interface between us and the community at large. And we have 15 people who are now awarded are now actively working on solutions. So we're training developers not only to take an idea, express it as a proof of concept, pitch it to a buying audience, one of each of those five will, will win. They will then get an implementation award and they will produce a minimum viable product which will go into production. This is an initiative to drive the digital economy. This is about growing its contribution to GDP. So we're hoping that this becomes an alternative source of foreign exchange for the country and keeping the intellectual property that we create, which is accrued value, local. Want to track your passport easier? Today's episode is for you. Let's learn more. The immigration challenge requires developers to make a solution that tracks passports from application to delivery. Have you ever had to keep calling or emailing the passport office to check if your passport is ready? A passport can take up to six weeks to be completed. A tracking app would definitely be a time saver and not just for members of the public who have to phone or email to find out when their passports will be ready. There are between 150 and 175 inquiries a week. Immigration officers have to interrupt their production process to respond to document status inquiries, which contributes to the further slowing down overall batch production times. Also, if the inquiry comes with a particularly irate tone, that may add to the officer's stress on the job and impact job satisfaction. The solution should enable the passport applicant to get brief, useful, and timely updates about the readiness or availability of their passports. Let's meet our panel of judges for today's challenge. Shaka Subero is the Government Relations Manager for Digital Trinidad Tobago Limited. Shaka is a career marketing and business development executive with over 15 years of international commercial experience at multinational institutions spanning the government and state enterprises, fast-moving consumer goods and telecommunication sectors across 10 countries within the Caribbean and Latin America. Richard Thomas is a systems analyst in the Immigration Division's Information Technology Department with duties in the spheres of systems administration and maintenance, as well as database administration. He also has a background in web design and administration. Richard holds bachelor's and master's degrees from the UE and Andrews University, Michigan, respectively. He believes the D-Hub Challenge represents an important pioneering step in helping to further build ICT capacity within Trinidad and Tobago. 
Lisa Maria Alexander is CEO and Chief Strategist of the Leadership Experience. She is a Certified Chartered Director and a Gender Consultant in the Caribbean on behalf of the Inter-American Development Bank. Lisa Maria was recently certified as a Balanced Scorecard Professional. She has degrees in Industrial Management and Advanced Marketing. For today's challenge, let's meet our first team of developers. Virtuoso Force Innovations member Anand Singh hails from Shagonas and says he had no plan to be a software developer, he just fell into it. His teammate convinced him to enter the challenge and he did it to benefit other citizens. The second team member of Virtuoso Force Innovations is Karisha Stewart, originally from Coover and now living in Chagonas. Karisha embraced the D-Hub challenge as a good opportunity to showcase the ability and potential of local developers. Karisha says that coding is her way to bring ideas to life. Let's check in with our developer team before they make their pitch. I've been a software developer for a long time, uh, working locally in the industry, and excited to get this challenge going. I'm also a software developer. Um, with our challenge, it's aligned to what I do on a daily basis, so I'm also excited to put what I know into practice. Yes, I'm feeling a bit nervous, but I think it's kind of overridden by the excitement as well. So I have a ball right here. Sure. <laughs> I used to play video games when I was younger, and I just knew that coding was linked to video games in some way. I didn't know how, but I just knew that. That was like my starting point. Well, she did develop a game on that. So. <laughs> I think we both at different times saw, oh, we have this, we, we know the solution for this. Um, just by the nature of it, um, it kind of reflects what we do on a daily basis. So yeah. it kind of, you know, we all to get them. I like moving from having an idea to the reality of a tangible solution. And the process throughout that may be stressful at times, but just knowing that you're trying to achieve something and in the midst of it, you're stretching yourself and you're learning and reaching to the, the end now where you reach your finish line, where this thing is working, that is always such a great feeling to say, mm, I, I did something, you know? Okay, let's introduce our first team for this challenge, Virtuoso Force Innovations. Hi, judges. Welcome. Thank you. Your time starts now. Thank you. So we are Virtuoso Force Innovations and we're thrilled to be here today. I am Karisha Stewart. With me I have... Hi, I'm Anand Singh. I've been a software engineer for over 15 years. So from our analysis of this challenge and feedback from our data collection, here's the problem. In time-sensitive scenarios, citizens do not have an easy, accessible method for passport updates. Also, in a digital era, depending solely on a human representative is counterproductive. And finally, if a staff member has to stop their job to deal with a customer, this can delay business processes. So now that we have defined the problem to counteract it, our solution as its core has this guiding principle to meet the customers where they are at. As such, we built an omnichannel notification system what this simply means is we have multiple channels for notifications such as SMS, WhatsApp, email, and this system is built such that we can easily add more channels later on. We also have a user portal where you can simply input your application ID or scan your, a barcode from your application receipt. And so here our solution is great for those of us who do not want to download yet another mobile application to use once every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, for the customer to have a good experience, it means that there must also be good business infrastructure and practices for the staff. And as such, we have developed the PIM protocol which, starts, which stands for Process Integration Module. And the PIM protocol also provides a dashboard with process insights to help analyze efficiency of business processes. 
So this is what we are asking. Choose us to help you. Use us to maximize our wealth of experience in messaging systems to build out a quality product for the population of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. So we're gonna head straight into our demo. Mm -hmm. Great. We'll just introduce you to this um, persona. Her name is June. She's preparing for a work conference in two months and realizes her passport has expired. She swiftly books an appointment at the passport office. She completes the renewal process and learns that she can receive, up receive updates on her passport through WhatsApp, which she uses every day. She opens up WhatsApp and scans the contact information. Then she will receive an immediate update confirming her application is accepted. Right, so it says accepted and it should be mailed out within 15 days. But time goes on, she receives a few notifications earlier, but she grows anxious about her passport status. So she recalls that she can get updates by messaging the immigration division via WhatsApp. So she sends a message asking when she'll get her passport back and receives a prompt response saying it's in the mailroom and will be sent out. And finally, she receives a message that her passport is out for delivery and Titi Post delivers her passport shortly after. And finally, she receives a message that her passport is out for delivery and Titi Post delivers her passport shortly after and bringing relief and satisfaction to June. So Thomas recently renewed his passport. He didn't sign up for alerts, don't know why. Uh, but now he's wondering, where is my passport? So he, could, he does a quick Google search and finds Travel Tracer, our solution. And armed with his receipt ID, he logs in to Travel Tracer to find his passport's journey in a timeline. Thomas decides to get notification, so he accesses his profile. He sets email as his preference because it's simpler. He enters his email address and other contact information and updates his setting. Uh, Thomas sees an email notification pop up on his phone. It's coming from immigration office. So he checks it. His passport is now out for delivery and it, it, it's coming in with TT Post. Subsequently, we have PIM protocol, which is our low code platform that we designed to allow immigration division to manage passport applications, glean insights about the data, as well as customize the underlying process. All the current open applications, uh, you can see what state they each are in, whether they accepted 24 processing 53 or mailroom uh, 25, and you could uh, go to see before all the applications. In the second row, we have a list of durations for each application in each stage. Below, you see a nice visualization of incoming and outgoing messages. Incoming messages are in blue and outgoing in green. Um, interesting, again, because we have the data, we could, uh, we could ask the question, why is it in November and December, there seems to be a, a little spike in um, incoming messages? Perhaps people traveling and they want to know, where's my passport? So again, you can, you can find out that information. Maybe you need to hire additional staff or change things around a little bit. So because we're capturing all this data, we can use it to answer questions that we don't even know exist yet. So that would be great for us. We can register for alerts using our application. It can happen in several ways. A citizen can send a message as we just saw, or a CSR can use our application, or we can even automate the process using our integration, which we will show in a few minutes. So here you enter the application ID and some contact information, as well as the channel of choice for the citizen. We're going to talk about the integration now. So meet Kevin. Kevin is an immigration officer and he produces passport documents. Uh, because of our application, he's happy that calls are reduced to him, um, as well as he's happy for the automation that, that happens. Um, when he completes a passport, the passport is in control system, fix for short, is updated. And using the report generation module, we can export new applications uh, so that our application can consume them. That is gonna show a quick sample of what it could look. This is not what it will be, but this is a report that it could be generated where the application ID is here. And if we say, okay, it's finished processing, we head into the mail room. So we're gonna talk about late applications. We mentioned it earlier. Again, you can, you can navigate to late applications on the screen here, or we can add, um, because we wanted to ensure people have a quick access to the information. We instituted daily alerts for administrators. And this is where you can add 
an administrator to be alerted. Again, similarly, he can choose his channel for communication, SMS, WhatsApp, um, whichever. And so similarly, every day at around 10 a.m., and of course that can change depending on the needs, and a, a notification will be sent to all administrators um, showing, <laughs> um, showing the messages coming in. Thanks, developers. Um, judges, any questions? We'll start with the challenge owner. All right, uh, nice presentation, uh, Virtuoso. I uh, just want to draw your attention to something that you stated earlier with regards to um, how the system functions in the background to alleviate any additional workload for, for the administrators or the, the passport production staff to have to deal with as far as pushing these um, alerts and so on. Uh, could you just um, clarify that for me? Is it, is it something that is, uh, that is automatic in terms of uh, the, the alerts going through or would there be a need to manually intervene to facilitate that forward push? Sure, I think so. What we've built is an uh, integration first platform. So the point of it is at any point, a human, a machine, a robot could actually interact at any stage. So we have a built a UI where updates can be manually added, mm -hmm. but we also build integration points where we can add automation at any point in the, in the process. So it could be automated. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Two questions for me. So, what would you say is the, the name of your of your application, your end-to-end -end solution? Uh, is it Travel Traces? That's what it is. We have uh, it's not an official registered company, but we have mm -hmm. a company called Virtuoso Force Innovations, and that company represents us. Right. And the company created Travel Tracer, which is which is um this solution, but. In the background, what what the what is the um the core or the what powers Travel Tracer is PIM protocol. Right. So we have two products here. Right. So if that's the case, then my my suggestion is that if you're putting forward a solution, right, mm -hmm. you should be able to kind of be able to wrap everything In into one. one. Okay. And then clearly distinguish between the two. Some good feedback for you. Yeah, thank uh, you. My question was around usability and oh. accessibility. Yeah. So, could you speak to us a little bit about that? How, because the average passport holder is, you know, no. there's no average, yeah. right? Any, anybody can apply. Tell us a little bit about that. And um, how I you think consider one of the things Carisha mentioned is we want to add the voice channel. I think right. voice is going to far reach in and it's ubiquitous. Yeah. Everyone can use just call and, you know, how to press a, a, a number on your telephone. So, definitely for that. Um, it will be a, a place to solve the problem. Any further questions? Uh, just, just for me, mm -hmm. just another question in terms of um, security. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because you noted, I noted early on where it is, you just put in the imp information. Is there like any sort of background two-factor authentication happening mm -hmm. with the actual users to make sure? Because again, passport information is a very mm -hmm. sensitive yeah. sort of information. Is, there, is that considered or will be con put into, the system, into your solution? We made choices based on the timelines mm -hmm. um, to be able to demonstrate value to you guys. Yeah. So we've been building software for a long time. We know we have security, we have scalability, usability. We, we know about those things, but our intent was to kind of show you something immediately and get pick your interest yeah. so that you, know, you can give us the opportunity to do those things which we, we know how to do. Thank you, Thank you. Okay. Team Virtuoso, and all the best to you. Okay. Congratulations you. for getting thus far. Yep. And you, we really wish you the best going forward. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, let's see what our judges have to say. What did you think about the pitch? I think the pitch was, um, was rather well done, quite fluid. Right. Um, I think they tried to, I guess, within the limited time frame, tried to touch on as uh, many of the, the salient points as they could. Yes. I think some of the questions that we asked, with, you know, to get great, greater insight into how things function. Yes. Some questions with regards <laughs> to, with regards to the automaticity of right. some of these processes. I, yes. Um, I, I got the sense that there might still be. Still. But still. Correct. Yeah, that still was one actually one of my questions. Push things forward, you know. Yeah. So. Right. For me, I mean, as I said earlier on, regarding the branding and understanding it, and um, you know, to really get what is the unique selling proposition that they put yeah. forward here. You went on there. You did your best. 
So we just wait to see what's next for you. Yes. Brilliant. Thank, nice. thank you very much. Thanks All right. Thank you. We, we feel good after the presentation. But wait is off my shoulder. Being able to work on a problem that kind of addresses a lot of the population. For me, that has been something I wanted to do for a long time. Coming out of this, I think we have an excellent solution and I would love to see like where this takes us next. Is there anything that you all would want to share with up and coming developers? You can offer encouragement or recommendation or anything you want to share with them, part of your journey, perhaps? Keep pursuing your dreams. Do not let failure stop you, but use failure as a stepping block to move to the next step in your journey. Take charge of your, your learning process, read books, go to conferences, do challenges, you know, and then I guess finally read The Pragmatic Programmer. Best book <laughs> anyway. The second team is... Christopher Mason of Picton in Laventille is the first Project Apollo member. He says he's trying to fix the issues of the world one line of code at a time. Christopher says that the D-Hub challenge is a good opportunity to improve his coding and to do that while getting financial income to support his family. Chad Kanhai from QREP completes Project Apollo. Chad says the D-Hub challenge is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to create a solution that will have long-term consequences for the country and its people. These issues force us to think outside the box to develop creative solutions that can be scaled up while remaining user-friendly, he says. Let's check in with our developer team before they make their pitch. I chose this challenge because it seemed like the one that most complemented my skills. So I had initially applied for two, the liquor license challenge, as well as the passport application tracking challenge and we got through with the passport application challenge. Um, but both to me and when I was thinking about the possible solutions, they seem similar in terms of applying my skill set. So once the challenge has started, I realized uh, it might be helpful to get somebody else to help me. We could share up the workload. At that point, I just started my, a new job. So I work, I am actually with Chris. From being on the job with him, I got to know him and he seemed like a good fit for matching my thought process. I gave him an idea, he came up with the other parts of it. I was front-end development, meaning how it looks to the public. And he was doing the back stuff, which is basically like the nuts and bolts, it's like the engine. Unfortunately, my partner was not able to attend today. So um, it's just me today. So I'm hoping I can be enough for both of us. Judges, this next team is sure to blow us out of this world. Introducing Project Apollo. Welcome. Thank you. Your time starts now. Hi, judges. I'd like to introduce you to Pastra, a revolutionary solution designed to streamline passport application tracking in Trinidad and Tobago. Our team is Project Capolo, and it is formed by myself, Chad Kanai, and uh, my partner, Christopher Mason. Our vision is to develop an innovative passport tracking solution that enables applicants to track their passport applications in real time. We are able to do this because we have a combined expertise in C++, HTML, and JavaScript, which makes us uniquely qualified to, to demonstrate our solution. So let's take a moment to understand the, the challenges with this, with this issue. Every year, hundreds of persons apply for passwords. Currently, tracking the application status involves manual methods leading to long wait times and uncertain statuses. This creates anxiety for applicants, as well as uh, it burdens government officials with high call volumes. <laughs> Pastrack offers a transformative solution. Imagine a user-friendly solution platform accessible from any browser. Applicants simply fill out intuitive forms to submit their information, and automated email and SMS notifications keep applicants informed every step of the way, eliminating the need to call for updates. And this empowers them, reducing wait time frustration and improves the overall experience. 
but it doesn't stop there. In real time, they can track their application by a web browser, by in four clearly labeled steps, application received, processing, passport ready, and shipped. Now let's focus on the benefits for applicants. FastTrack provides transparency and peace of mind throughout the entire process. No more waiting on hold or wondering where their application is throughout the entire process. They have a convenient access to it anytime, anywhere, fostering trust and satisfaction. This isn't just good for applicants, it's good for government agencies. FastTrack significantly reduces call volume, freeing up staff to handle other tasks. The automated system saves on resources and improves overall efficiency, allowing for faster processing times and better service delivery. Ultimately, it enhances the government's image by offering a modern and efficient application process. Now, let's switch gears and talk about the proof of concept fees. The results of the proof of concept fees. We observed two noteworthy results. Firstly, we conducted tests on the automated notifications the test users seamlessly receive both types of notifications within a few seconds of scanning. And secondly, our POC testing re re revealed a number notable decrease in applicants' inquiries. FastTrack enhances applicants' empowerment through self-service tools, indicating substantial strides towards operational efficiency. Our asks to successfully implement PassTrack and bring its benefits to fruition, we seek the continued support of MDT, IGOV, and the Ministry of National Security Immigration Division. This investment will be instrumental in empowering both citizens and immigration division. <laughs> PassTrack has the potential to transform the passport application process for everyone involved. Let us help you eliminate frustration, save time, and improve efficiency. Now we would like to turn to the demonstration of it. Thank you. So, FastTrack works simply by scanning a QR code mm -hmm. at the station. So let's say that you are the station where the application has been received. It ha at that station, you would have a QR code. And all it simply involves is to launch the application, simply go to the designated URL, go to em employee login, and then for your login, and you would go to the dashboard, the administrative dashboard. Simply go to scan, scan the QR code, and that triggers the notification. It's a simple notification, send in an email to you as well as you have the SMS message being sent to the user, as you can see here. And that's basically the backbone of our system. Thanks for your demo, Chad. Um, any questions? Sure, sure. Just a quick question with regards to the, the QR code and its part in uh, triggering the alerts, yeah. you know, at each stage, uh, you know, in terms of automaticity, right? Uh, could you say a little something about how your system is set up to, to facilitate that? Sure. So when the applicant, let's say they go to the sign-up page where they enter their email or their pass their email and their cell phone number, once they do that, they generate a QR code, which is sent back straight to the applicant within, probably with, uh, by the end of the day if not automatically. And that QR code is tagged specifically for the applicant. Okay. So when they go to their appointment, they carry the QR code with them. Mm -hmm. So that becomes them, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So at the stage, it, the officer would scan the QR code for the applicant as well as the stage. That combination triggers a notification. Okay. All right, thank you. That's does it require any additional equipment on this side of the officer? I see just you have a scanner. Just a scanner. Right, so that's part of the, the solution. Yes. That scanners, will, okay, yes. I see that, I see that. And from the user side, it's this is a separate website or it's part of the, what, what are you- be, It can with? be integrated into the exist, the new e-appointment system that was launched recently. Okay. It can be integrated there or it can be, it's entirely integration. 
Okay, I've got you. Any uh, any special um, any special mechanisms for enhancing data security? You know, enhancing or protecting the the privacy of the, the data. Yeah. Itself? So we we um, again once we move into the MVP stage, we will be back in the system with significant security measures because we wouldn't want to secure a person's data, even though it's not much we're requiring from that. We still would back their system, uh, especially the database where it's stored. So, just a question for me. So the QR code comes back to the to the receiver. Yes. Right. As you said, you're putting additional security measures to, to ensure that QR code will not be mimicked. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understood. Is does this solution offer any impact on the, or I should say, speak to us about the impact on the time frame? You talked about some of the the bit of the the value pr proposition, but talk to us about. How you you know walk us through the sort of time frame between me applying and uh, I guess at the back end the expectation right. that the officer will be able to give this real time you mentioned real time. So the entire development of this was we wanted to make sure that this system, which would operate parallel to anything that is currently with immigration, is that it should be it should have minimal effect on the officers. So all it literally requires is just to scan the two QR codes, and that's that's all that's required from immigration. Okay. Any any further questions? No. no, no. Nothing at this. Point. Nothing at this point. I would very much like to thank you for your presentation. Um, I think it gave us some clarity on 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 what yeah. what you you know what you guys are proposing, and I really want to congratulate you for making it this far, and wish you all the best thank for you. what is to come. Thank you. Very well done today. How do our judges feel? Let's check in. So gentlemen, that was quite a simple presentation. Yeah. But yeah. simple is never is not bad. Yeah. Simple is not bad. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I still had some um, some concerns about what what again drives that automatic effect. Right. The when, it, when it comes to getting the alerts to the the uh, the applicant. Right. Okay. Um, uh, I did see in this presentation some reference again to um, reducing, you know, manual labor on the on. Well, it seemed to be more efficiency. Yeah, yes. efficiency. Yeah, increasing efficiency with regards to the passport production on the part of the uh, the, the the production offices and whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it, it you yeah, know, it did not quite um, didn't hit home entirely. You know, with with the demonstration with the dem. I mean yes, yes in the in the basic pitch, but um, but the demo didn't didn't quite do that home to me. Yeah. Right. Shaka, what about you? What do you thought about his pitch? No, his communication. The, the pitch was on point. I mean mm -hmm. I, I I captured it from start to finish. And as I said, um what I liked about it is that he had a name mm -hmm. and he was able to follow through with the name all the way through <laughs> and you know, be able to kind of, kind of be able to market that. And that is one of the key things when you're selling a solution like this, you must be able to kind of be able to take this all the way through from end to end. And I was able to follow it, follow the um, the presentation. But from the pitch perspective, I was able to get it succinct, very, very to the Good, and I thought he handled himself pretty well on the questions. Yes, correct. Uh, with, with, with confidence. So I, I think, you know, we, we definitely have something that we, we can reflect on when, we, when we're scoring. Yes, right? correct. So I, I would commend them on that. Well, you're feeling better. Yes, yeah, much better. Much better. So you sure. feel that what you presented out there did you and your team justice? Yes, I think you did. The q &A was actually the best part for me because I know the system inside. It took a lot of hard work. Our parents were very much supportive. Thanks, Chris of Love. You were able to write a good portion of the code. And that was for sure. I hope I did I did the team bro. So if we were to win, um, we would, well, we would definitely continue with development and then we would hopefully start our own company. Let's meet our third and final team of developers for this challenge. Christopher Keller of Ank Tech is originally from Diego Martin and now resides in Aranguez. In addition to his coding endeavors, he says he leads a double life as a farmer, 
For the past eight years, he has owned and operated a flourishing 15-acre farm in Wallafield, cultivating fruit and vegetables. His farming escapades are as tech-savvy as his coding exploits. Let's check in with our developer team before they make their pitch. My name is Christopher Keller. I'm a developer. I've been a developer for over 30 years. And Tech Team 2 is the name of our group. And um, so it was myself and another guy. And each of us chose a challenge. So this was the one that I, I chose. Initially, um, although I knew about the challenge, I wasn't really interested in, in entering, right? But my partner, he really insisted that we try the challenge. He was able to convince me to, to do it. And I ended up, ended, ended up in the finals. I enjoy solving problems, right? Coming up with as much solutions as possible for a problem and then finding the best one. I really have to congratulate the ministry for putting on this event because um, as a developer for so many years, it's very difficult for individuals to be able to, to get the big contracts, you know, in terms of with government or even in the private sector as well. Right? What normally happens is that you either have to work for somebody or one of the big players. So for the average developer out there, even though you might have a lot of talent, it's difficult to get in unless you work for somebody, right? I would really love to get that opportunity, you know, to ease some of the problems that the public have in, in, in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that the solution I have come, I have come up with, it could be used by other ministries as well. Judges is introducing our final team, Ank Tech Team 2. Hello, judges. Welcome. Good day, good day. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is Chris Keller. And I'm here to represent Ank Tech Team 2, with our proof of concept. Our team is comprised of three senior developers with diverse skills, have worked on a number of different projects internationally and, and locally. Um, in the public as well as the private sector. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Well, the problem is the immigration officer, office, sorry, receives about 175 passport inquiries per week. Mm. And that causes an interruption in the production process, which gets the immigration officers upset and that could re result in further uh, reduction in production, right? So we have a, a, a vicious cycle going on there. They also email notifications as well, right? phone notifications, text, SMS, WhatsApp, etc. In terms of the inputs now, well, if we allow to integrate with the PIC system, there are a number of different ways that we can integrate, right, based on prior experience. The ability processing, we need to be able to tell, you know, when the document is passing through the production department and where it's reached, right? You could use a scanner or something. But what really is a proof of concept? When we develop and sometimes we get lost. So you need to remember, what is a proof of concept? A proof of concept is supposed to be an experiment where you look to find the best technology to, for a solution. Right? So we look at all the different options and alternatives and come up with the best. So for, uh, for our solution, we have to have a hypothesis, of course, mm -hmm. because every proof of concept needs a hypothesis. You must have something that you're trying to get. Right. The success criteria for our hypothesis was to make sure there was, super, there was security, automation. So like, you, don't want, you don't want to give the immigration officers too much work to do. Right? Scalability and accuracy. And we decided to use OCR and RFID as a technology. So that's the end of my, uh, mm -hmm. my You can pitch. proceed to your de demo. Okay. All right, so according to challenge requirements, all right, so I'm logged in as a normal user now. So this is like after, uh, any applicant. And once they come in, they would be able to see exactly where the process is reached, right? Mm -hmm. But for this particular applicant here, if I were to just change the, from issued, for example, just take it back to accepted and save this here. And what would happen is it would automatically send a notification in terms of the SMS and all these different things, right? All of them using third parties that basically just to get with you. Um, the issue is what happens if we don't get access to the PIC system, wanted to offer alternatives and options because the um, immigration department will be concerned in terms of uh, the security of the information, people's personal information and that sort of thing. So we wanted to create a system that could work without having to integrate with PIX as well, at least give, the, give that option. 
right? So the first experiments, yes, we wanted to be able to use the application we see to extract the data from. Right? The problem was the fact that it's black print on blue paper. Um, the size, because you recommended required resolution for OCR to work properly, is about 300 dpi, and this was just a, a, almost on the boundary of that. Right? The camera and scanners, well, we do have high quality cameras and camera scanners, so we just thought to see if we could get it done with just a normal uh, little, little video camera. Right? So we wanted to test three, three OCR engines, look at different types of input. Whether we could take a photograph of this, whether we could use a scanned image or PDFs. We decided to use RFID instead of a barcode scanner because that barcode scanner is the line of sight, right? With RFID, there are a number of advantages that could be used. You think about it, they're very cheap. They cost about less than five cents US, what if up to two dollars, three dollars, depending on the amount of functionality you want with it. We wanted to be able to associate the, each RFID <coughs> tag as a unique identification number, uh -huh. right? We wanted to be able to associate that number with the application ID. So we wanted to be able to write to the stickers, right? You can also write to the stickers. Mm -hmm. So when you read, you not only get the ID, but also the application ID, okay. right? Which is the figure that we need for processing, right? Right. Um, so we need to be able to write it. Now, this scanner, the desktop reader here, only reads and doesn't write it. Okay. Right? So we had to test to see if which stickers could write. Um, even though we did a lot of work in terms of the images, Taking images, the skewing them, you know, sort of pre preprocessing, right? I think we did over 50 different experiments with changing different parameters to see what we need best. PDF scans and have been the fastest, and it's also the, you need some more to work for the immigration officers. I have some recent samples that I created here. Right. I have a file with about 20, 20 receipts from right. the sample that you gave us, right? This year, you can see that. It got the sample of populated receipt paper. It got the, all of the, the text was extracted. Even this tiny text at the bottom here, it was able to extract because of pre-processing that we did, we did to get the, uh, the best output from it, right? As the end of my demonstration, you don't have any questions. So, thank you so much for that and, and for going through. I'll start with the challenge, Una. Okay, um, uh, good presentation. Uh, so you put a lot of effort into that. I uh, just have a question with, well, you seem to have uh, put a lot of thought into creating a mechanism that would limit the amount of labor that, um, additional labor yeah. that the immigration staff would have to put into, right. pro you know, aiding in the processing of these uh, documents, pushing alerts and so on. All right. Um, you pulled up a web interface just now to show us uh, like a sort of um, progression of uh, the, the passport application on screen for the, the person who would have applied for it. Mm. Is there anything in that um, progression to support uh, a situation in which an application is, is uh, in a pending state because... Yes. Yeah. When it, I don't know if you, if you saw it, but one of the states that are available is problem. Right? I can pull it up for you if you want to see. But that is one of the states that, that mm. uh, when, I, when you drop down, when you drop down, mm -hmm. problem as well as um, there was another slide which shows the progression with the immigration officers, right? And problem was at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But there is a state in case there's some sort of problem. Um, some missing data, yeah. you know, supporting documents, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was catered for the system. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am very much impressed in terms of, you know, for well thought out, I saw the analysis, I saw logical deduction all the way through. Um, because from a layperson's point of view, I mean, these are some of the things that you originally and you you summarize it into those four buckets, you know, application received, processing, output delivery, and also um, um yes. being um sent out. So I mean, um, I have to say very well, very well thought out presentation. You know, they say the devil is in the details, and you right. spend some time in the details. Talk to me about random. I saw the guy waving going on vacation, right? And, and that's me. Yeah. So talk to me about what are some of the considerations you thought about for that user, for the person who maybe not as tech savvy, they know where to go. But tell me a little bit of the, the right. thinking behind that. Right. That, that's why I more concentrated on things like email, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, or text messaging, right. those sort of things that you know the older folks like myself yeah. would be more familiar with, right? Uh, as opposed. To, you know, to, um, to, to WhatsApp and I mean, those are other things that could be the sure. options that exist there. 
right? Um, but of course, at the end of the day, we want the average user to be able to go online or get an email or get an alert as many different ways so that they have an idea of where their passport has reached, you know, where it is in the process. Okay, fair enough. And I guess the question follow on that to know that the email is legitimate, that it's a legitimate email, that it's not spam email or phishing. Or, or phishing. Email. Well, that's, yeah. well um, <laughs> but I try to follow the best practices. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you saw my email. I do. Um, I try to at least use, you know, official website, that sort of thing. Right. Um, one of the things that I also included was the right to unsubscribe. Yeah. To right. these messages and, and that sort of thing, right? Which is best practice again. And d just wondering about uh, the the effect, well, given okay. given the elements of the production process, exactly. in, uh, you know. So everything there is data driven, right? Mm -hmm. So the actual, actual fields that you have to put in, what's the length of time mm -hmm. to reach from stage one to stage two, stage three to stage four, or even for the entire process. So that right? could be programmed. You can put in a uh, ballpark figure, yeah, mm -hmm. and we use that to calculate uh, okay. the yes, the time. delivery time. You know, I see. So okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, you know, congratulations on, on being at this step. And we really appreciate that you took the time to show us not just the, the software, but you brought all your artifacts with you. And I think it, it made your point. So we thank you and we wish you the very best. Okay, then. All right, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's find out what our judges have to say. That was very interesting. Uh, you know, he he really sat, spoke to the heart of of the of the immigration <laughs> officer. That should make you smile. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, certainly, I'm glad to know that um, someone put that level of thought into yeah. into coming up with a, a solution that suits you know the needs of immigration at this time. Um, well thought out. I like the pitch. Uh, and again, bringing all those artifacts on display for us, talking about all his, his experimentations and. You know, the only trial and error that, that he had to go through to come to a near perfect result in terms, well, at least in, in you know, at that prototype stage, if you will, yes. uh, for the type of information we want to see yeah. uh, captured and and uh, brought forward at each stage of the other process. Yeah. So, you know, certainly glad to hear that. Also glad to, to see that um, he took some time to give uh, data security some consideration, even even if only on the um, the front end of things. High level, right. yes. He was quite technical, so I guess the question I would ask you is, is his pitch? You know, yeah. did he sell it to you? Did he did. He, sell he, it? he did. He did sell it to me. He did sell it to well, me. Well, once yeah. he sold it, yeah. so we, you know, we have quite a bit to think about. We have to, we have to, um, just in the context of all that has transpired so far, we would, would have to come up with our scores shortly. Yes, <laughs> Okay, judges, now it's time to gather your thoughts and submit your scores. I'm not a person who really likes to be in the forefront of things. I normally want Eddie McBrow do any work, so this was new for me. You know, in terms of business, you know, uh, uh, even though I'm a lecturer, right, I only took up lecturing because you know, I have a, a version to public speaking and that sort of thing to help me to, you know, to get over that atmosphere. Well, it's over, uh, already hard work. It's now up to the judges to see what happened. And I didn't really see this as work, right? I really enjoyed it, you know, because I have a passion for programming, I have a passion for developing, I have a pa passion for problem solving. So this wasn't really work work for me. I just want to keep on solving problems and developing. So judges, we just saw three ingenious teams present their unique solutions to the Immigration Division Challenge on Okara. You know, my background is in mechatronics, it's in electronics, and I was so excited to see a team actually brought on some hardware. That was exciting. Is there anything that stood out for you? Well, to be honest, Daniel, I really want to hear from the judges. So judges, were there any innovations or unique approaches that you saw presented today? And I want to kind of feel the room here. So, Mr. Thomas, how do you feel about what you saw today? Well, first and, first and foremost, uh, let me say that I'm quite delighted with the, uh, the, the level of professionalism mm -hmm. that came across in, uh, in 
all of the challenges, all of the <laughs> presentations, sorry, uh, this afternoon. Um, special attention going towards the, the third presenter, mm. uh, who seemed to touch on all of the uh, major considerations for immigration, uh, attempting to respond to, to the challenges that we put forward to, uh, you know, for this effort. Um, basically it. I don't know what my colleagues uh, have in mind. Yeah. Um, firstly, let me say, all three were good in terms of what is in terms of content. Um, from a delivery perspective, um, they could have spoken up a little bit louder, yes. paused, you know, measured what they were saying, um, and understand that when they're delivering a message, they're not delivering it to their peers, they're delivering to that kind of, as you said, dumb it down a bit, bring it to that point. Um, but overall, I mean, good presentations, um, they just need to be able to just now work on being able to market themselves, position and poise, you know, raising their pitch, lowering it, and reading the room uh, is one of the most important things. Because like, for, there was one presenter who kind of had his back to us at one point, and you know, you always have to make sure that you're not you're not losing persons in in, in what you're saying. So, to me, good good attempt, and I um, applaud the fact that you know we have these young minds uh, developing this sort of technology in Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks so much for that, Mr. Subaru. Lisa Maria. Well, we've seen it. Um, I think the marriage between the technical and the, I would say, the simplistic was, you know, stood out this evening. We had very, very simple and then we had very uh, technical. And I would say that what really we, we have to really appreciate and applaud, and we can't say it enough, that this talent is you know, indigenous and it's here. And I believe that regardless of the outcome in terms of who gets the prize, yes, they have all already won because we have seen them think about real life problems that not just affect the ministries, but affect the average citizen in Trinidad and Tobago. So I say bravo. I agree. Thanks so much, judges. Yeah, and I think I know Mr. Thomas's answer on this one, but was there any particular contestant you felt really understood the, the challenge? <laughs> he showed his bias. <laughs> he showed his bias up front. He showed his bias. I'm answering for you, Richard. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly the, the third presenter. Um, again, um, there's a level of technical knowledge and appreciation of uh, some of the, the minutia that, that go with addressing some of the challenges that we're dealing with, uh, yeah. you know. So we, we appreciate that and, uh, you know, bias or not, that's just my... <laughs> yeah. All right, I just want to judges, just to pick your brains a little bit here. If you were in the developer's shoes, what would you have done differently to perfect your solution? Mm. Well, I think if, if we were given enough, if I was given enough time to do so, um, maybe, uh, maybe more of a full-blown demonstration. <laughs> not, not perfect necessarily. Mm -hmm. But uh, what we saw was a lot of um, uh, still stuff at the proof of concept stage, understandable. Yes. But maybe uh, maybe more of the features in some of these um, uh, web apps and so on could have been fleshed out to the point where you know we, we could see results, the, the specific not just not just talk about a result, but see an actual result uh, at, at the end of, of the pro of the process. Um, and I thought the I thought the third presenter came closest to that type right. of um, ideal, you know. Correct. Showing his biceps again there. I think he. Yeah, might be. He is. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I think he might be. If yeah. I may, I would say I would be looking for unique value proposition. Uh, so somebody said it that you know there, there are a couple of ways you can go, and 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 I, what we saw was persons who had done their homework and so. So we had reasonable assurance, and as you can hear from the challenge, Jonah, they, 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 they definitely hit, hit the nail on the head in some instances. But what I would say is that, wow me, tell me what's, tell me why you. And, and I think that's what was missing for me. Tell me why you. Because it's, it, we're not just, you know, choosing a solution. We're choosing the talent and the skill that goes with it for the delivery. Because I'm, I'm already in execution mode. So, so wow me. Well, why are you, Daniel? <laughs> Mrs. Subaru, I want to direct this one firstly to you. Sure. You know, and Okara judges, you know, um, we saw some very innovative solutions today, but the Hub, the Developers Challenge itself, is an innovative solution to a problem that was 
you know, developed by the Ministry of Digital Transformation. So, Mr. Subaru, do you think this is a good model for public-private partnership? Yes, it is, because one, you're getting private sector involved to help solve real world, as Lisa said, real world problems that they themselves also face. Because coming from the private sector, when we have to interface with government institutions, we are often found ourselves, you know, butting our heads, trying to understand why bureaucracy, why things take so long. So now that we're able to take initiatives like this and work with the part, work with the government to be able to now say, hey, you know, you've you've got a good solution. Mm -hmm. We want to work with you and we can now be able to drive that that innovation all the way through. We can now see ourselves going into a futuristic society because that's the way that's the way creativity starts. Right. When everyone works together, then you're able to solve the problem because that's what you need to have right now. Yeah. All right, judges, any final thoughts? <laughs> um, so keep on keeping on with the health challenge. Yeah, keep on. Move from yeah. strength to strength, right? Yeah. Thank you so much, judges. It was a pleasure having you guys here today. We saw these three amazing teams for the online passport application tracking solution by the ministry, by the, sorry, the immigration division. It was excellent. We loved you guys. Thanks so much. And continue tuning in to the D-Hub Challenge. There are more D-Hub Challenges coming up. Stay tuned to see local developers create cool tech solutions to Trinidad and Tobago's problems. Become a member of the Developers Hub community. Go check out our website. It is a great environment to learn in if you're new to coding. And a solid platform for growth if you're more advanced. Join us on the next D-Hub Challenge. Where dreams are pitched. And fortunes will be made. And the future of Trinidad and Tobago's tech landscape is shaped one solution at a time on the Z-Hub Challenge. Challenge.